A very good evening and very warm welcome to St. Paul's Cathedral live stream choral evening prayer. My name is Robert Woon and I'm the canon missioner of this cathedral. St. Paul's Cathedral is the home church for Anglicans in the Diocese of Melbourne and also the province of Victoria. I hope that wherever you are, St. Paul's will be your home as we worship together. Our cathedral stands on the traditional land of the Kulin nations and we acknowledge and pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging as we pray for the ongoing work of reconciliation. The order for tonight's service is available on our website or by the link below. Please join us in singing the hymns and also saying the responses printed in bold. Our cathedral is currently closed to the public in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Services are live streamed and led by different members of the clergy and music team. We hope you will enjoy spending time together with us in teaching and song. For the past few weeks in the choral evening prayer services, we have been reflecting on Peter's first epistle through Bible reading, the sermon, and also music. Tonight, our passage is from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. 1 Peter is written by Peter to the early Christians who were separated from each other. They faced trials and temptation. And also, this is particularly relevant for our situation today. May God bless us richly together as we worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Peace to those who are far off. Peace to those who are near. Glory to Father, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen.
The night is now past, and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light to all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first epistle to, of Peter. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same intention. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin. So as to live for the rest of your earthly life no longer by human desires, but by the will of God. You have already spent enough time in doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in licentiousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, carousing, and lawless idolatry. They are surprised that you no longer join them in the same excess of dissipation, and so they blaspheme. But they will have to give an account to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was proclaimed even to the dead, so that though they had been judged in the flesh, as everyone is judged, they might live in the spirit as God does. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hosti hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speak must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory.
the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This evening we reflect on the passage from 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Peter wrote his first epistle to the persecu persecuted Christians of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. His aim of writing to them was to encourage them to live a holy life in a hostile world, for there is hope in God in the midst of their sufferings. Peter wanted them to experience God's grace and love in the midst of their suffering. In this passage of chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, Peter highlights Jesus Christ's example by focusing on Jesus' determination, means and purpose of living a godly life. Peter says that we too can live a godly life, but not casually, because casual Christians always become casualties. Peter gives us three ways or three steps to live a godly life. First of all, he said, model your life on Jesus. Jesus, who lived according to God's purpose, despite his affliction. Secondly, Peter say, refrain, refrain from lusts. And last of all, Peter says to live a godly life, we must live a life devoted to the brethren, even using our spiritual gifts as a display of our love for them. So the first step to live a godly life is to model our life after Jesus, is to determine to live like Christ in verses 1 to 2. Peter says that we are not to live our lives in the human passions, but for the will of God. We spend enough time in the past indulging in human passions and lusts. If our life is about pleasure and comfort, we are going to choose the road of sin. If our life is about living a life after Jesus, then we will reject looking like the rest of the world and we will arm our minds with knowledge that we will suffer for Jesus. Too often, our attitude is to avoid suffering. We would rather not suffer for Christ. We would still commit sin in order to avoid suffering. But here, Peter has called us to avoid sin. By avoiding sin, like Jesus, we will suffer. So Peter said we need to resolve, he used the word, arm yourself with the same purpose as Christ armed himself. Peter should, says that we need to show spiritual mat maturity when we arm ourselves with the mind to suffer rather than to sin. For Jesus chose to suffer rather than sin, because he was dead to sin. Jesus consistently chose to obey God, even though it meant that he would suffer for that choice. This is not the first time Peter mentioned Christ's example. Peter repeatedly relies upon the example of Christ suffering to encourage us. In chapter 2, verses 21 to 22, Peter say, For you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example to follow in his steps. He, that is Christ, committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And again in chapter 3, verses 17 and 18, Peter says, For it is better if God will it also, you suffer for doing what is right rather than doing what is wrong. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, in order that he might bring us to God, having put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. So here in chapter 4, verses 1 to 2, Peter highlights Christ's example 
by focusing on Christ's determination, means and purpose of living a godly life. Peter wants to give us hope and encouragement when we suffer for Christ. Jesus suffered for what is right. Jesus suffered as a just person for the world who was unjust and unrighteous. When Jesus suffered, he acted righteously. He did not retaliate or return evil for evil. Since Jesus suffered, we need to understand that when we love God and follow him and do his will, we will also suffer. So the first step for a godly life is to determine to live like Christ. The second step is to abstain from worldly desires in verses 3 to 6. Peter talked about our past experience when we followed the world in its sinful lifestyle in verse 3. And then Peter talked about our present testimony in verse 4 when we live for God and how the world is surprised with our lifestyle. And in verse 5, Peter talks about the future judgment that everyone will be judged according to their lifestyle. The world hasn't changed much since Peter's days, has it? Just look at our society. It is hedonistic, narcissistic, and also iniquitous. We not only sin, we like to sin. We glorify sin. What was forbidden was tolerated, then accepted, and now encouraged, even celebrated. Someone said, we have forgotten how to blush. We've already spent too much time in sin, says Peter. Now live your life as a witness in verse 4 that the world might be surprised because of how we live our lives for God. Yes, they are so surprised that they will mock you. They are going to tell you that it is no big deal to follow them. They will even persecute you because you are a Christian. But Peter in verse 5 says, bear in mind, there is a future. And future is the judgment of God. Everyone will have to give an account to him who judges the living and the dead. You are not to join them, the world, says Peter. Let them malign you. Let them cause you grief. You are following the footsteps of Jesus when you cease to sin and follow God's will. So Peter says, the first step is to determine to live for Christ in our godly life. The second step is to abstain from worldly desires. And thirdly, to accomplish the will of God. Why live a godly life? Peter says that the accumulation of all God's plans and purposes are on the way. We are living in the last hours or the last days. Therefore, live in the light of the end of age. Jesus is coming back anytime soon. So Peter tells us to be self-controlled and sober mind for the sake of prayer. In other words, stay calm. Be focused with prayer. Be earnest and disciplined in your prayers as you experience the rapid changes of our day. Notice in verse 8, Peter says, above all, which means this is really important. And Peter gives us three things we need to do to accomplish God's will in our lives. First of all, he says, keep on loving one another. Persist in love for one another, as we just heard in the anthem, because love covers a multitude of sin. Secondly, Peter says, be hospitable without complaining. Share your home, share your life with the people who are in need. Do not complain because God has blessed you so that you can be a blessing to others. 
We cannot be Christians in isolation. A personal faith between you and God, excluding others, is not real Christianity. And last of all, Peter says, be good stewards of the abilities and gifts that God has given you. They are given you, given to you by God in His amazing grace. And this grace, Peter says, is like a multicolor grace. To each of us, we are given different abilities and different gifts. So be good stewards of it, looking after our abilities and our gifts well to serve one another. So Peter says, use them for one another. Be stewards of that many different gifts that God has given you, whether it be money, possessions, home, cars, or any other blessing that you have. They are for you to share, that others will know God better. Even our words can be of encouragement to everyone to know God better. So we all have different blessings in different degrees, and we are not to be selfish, but to use them to serve God. Let me leave just two thoughts with you tonight. Let our lives be ruled by these two things. In whatever we do, first of all, we do it that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. Secondly, when suffering, find your strength in God and know that you are spiritually alive in Him. Live a godly life for God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd of your people, help us when we hear his voice to know him who calls each of us by name, and to follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our intercession today, first of all, we pray for the world in this worldwide emergency due to the coronavirus, for the four million victims of this virus, for their families and loved ones. Pray for all the nations that they will make good effort and commitment to contain and fight this epidemic. Pray for protection and wisdom for all those in the front lines who fight this virus, who assist in fighting this virus, and also look after those who are sick and needy, and those who provide essential services for the communities. For our own country, we pray for wisdom, commitment, and perseverance for all our federal, state, and local governments as they seek the best strategies to bring about the best results for all the peoples in our society. Pray for ourselves to have patience, understanding, and resilience in this lockdown period, that we will do our part to contain the spread of this virus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
Pray for our cathedral in these challenging and restrictive times. For our cathedral chapter and subcommittees as they lead us and work for the health and future of our cathedral. For our dean, the, Re the Reverend Dr. Andreas Lower, all the pastoral staff, as we continue to provide pastoral support to our members. For our music director, Mr. Philip Nichols, in providing us excellent music, music and managing the choir. For all our operational and administrative staff who work tirelessly in the background in keeping our cathedral and its ministry running effect efficiently. We also pray for the well-being and safety of all our members, whether they are in Melbourne or in other parts of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Shepherd, we pray for your people of every land. We pray for those in countries that are still torn by war and conflict, for those who continue to suffer the effects of past wars and conflict, for all aid and relief workers, for all those who are in refugee camps or incarcerated because of the wars and conflicts. Do not let us forget those of these and other lands who have paid with their lives the shocking cause of war and strengthen us that we may, we may be ready to make the sacrifices required for peace. Good Shepherd, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Shepherd, we pray for your church and for all who follow you that we will continue to strive to lead a godly life for you. We pray for all leaders of churches, for those who are ministers to your people, for all those who serve you in places of loneliness and hardship. Help us to work for the time when all your followers will be able to eat together at the table you prepared for us and together proclaim your love to the world. Good Shepherd, in your mercy. Hear our Loving Shepherd, we pray for all those you have entrusted to our care. We pray for our own families and our own friends, for those who must depend on others for their welfare, for those with constant responsibilities of care for others. Help us to make a community where all are known by name, where all, known, where all know the experience of being accepted and value as individuals. Good Shepherd, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Shepherd, we pray for all in need of your comfort and balm. We pray for all who are lost, lonely or confused, for the sick and for the dying, for all who provide medical care, for social workers and pastoral care workers in this time of pandemic. Help us to bring consolation to all who suffer and the assurance that in sorrow and in pain, you will not abandon them. Good Shepherd, in your mercy. Yeah. Loving Shepherd, you lay down your life for your sheep. We remember all who are in your eternal care. We give thanks for the courage and selflessness of those who live in peace or in war have given their lives, that others might live. May we, like them, offer our lives in love for others. Lead us through the green pastures and deep valleys of life until we come with all who have gone before us to dwell forever in your presence. Good Shepherd, in your mercy. The evening collect. Lighten now, O darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Let us praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.